You should be picking up on a common theme coming from Gable Radio these days. Small form factor, that's common with them through all of their designs as long as I've known about them. Coming from Asia, that's just a common theme, space-constrained gear that is still highly functional. As of late, it's been next-level craftsmanship and premium materials, and in specific, I'm talking about carbon fiber, and not just any carbon fiber, but carbon fiber that is very specifically focused on and formulated to transmit RF. And today, we get a look at the GRA CFP2600. Newly introduced, and you know what that means watching the HOA HAM YouTube channel, that means that you get a discount as an early adopter. So if you're watching this late November 2025, it's likely that there's an active discount. Go ahead and check that in the description below. I'll pin it if there is an actual discount going on at this point in time. So what we have is an antenna that comes in five pieces, a base with an M101 and two adapters that let us go to 3 8 by 24. So this is usable with all the gable gear and all of us that are used to using 3 8 by 24 for us here in the States or wherever you have 3 8 by 24 gear. Three sections in the middle are identical, and then there is a top unit that tapers and comes to a rounded ball at the top. Here's what is unique about this particular antenna. You determine the length of your radiator based on how many sections you choose to assemble for this antenna. From the bottom up, about one inch, you see a matte finish, and this is the precision ground section of this particular length that allows for the continuity, so to speak, the RF to travel from the prior section. And you assemble this in a lock. It's simply a push until that matte finish disappears into the next section. And when you want to pull them apart, you end up with a popping sound and that's how they're disengaged. Let's keep adding sections till we get resonant on six and 10 meters and then go play radio with some G3, G4 geomagnetic storm conditions. So what we're going to do to demonstrate this is put these sections on one by one. This is an M10 one adapter, so it fits on all the gable gear. And this ships with an adapter to let us go over to 3 8 by 24. Here in the States, or wherever you choose to use Freedom Units. So I have the um, Network Analyzer in the shack right now running on continuous sweep. So I'm gonna step back after I add each section here to see exactly what resonance we get. We're just gonna leave the radials out the entire time. They are 16 and a half foot long radials, three of them. Where are we with just one section? All right, now adding the second section, normally I would be putting these together horizontally because I can get good torque. So, you know, this isn't how I would put it together in the field, but nonetheless, I could probably control what I'm doing here. And yes, I can. So let's back up and see where we are after two sections. Let's go see where we are after three sections. And the middle three sections, bottom and then middle one, middle two, one more middle three, these are all the same size. Step back. There we are with three sections in total. Sorry for the wind noise. It's blowing right at my microphone. Let me come on this side. Okay, here we are with the fourth section. Back away. All right, now here we come with the fifth and final section. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to have to pop this one off to get this on and then I'll put the last two on together. 
These are precision fit. Okay, here we are with the antenna full length. What do we look like for SWR? CQ, 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 Delta meters, Kilowatt, Bravo, Zero, Whiskey, Golf, Uniform, CQ. Kilo, Delta, Four, Bravo, Mike, Golf. Uh, go ahead there, uh, Kilowatt, uh, Delta, Four, I didn't get the rest of it. Yeah, it's Kilo, Delta, Four, Bravo, Mike, Golf. Running 100 watts on a uh, small, tiny antenna in the backyard at the HOA this afternoon. QSL? You said Bravo Mike Golf, is that Roger? Roger, Roger. Yeah, QTH is Tampa, Florida. No snow. Low of uh, 55 degrees today. It was wonderful. Over. Oh, yeah. Well, you get over there sunburn, right? Eh? <laughs> Roger, Roger. No snow. I'm originally from southeastern Pennsylvania, so uh, I know what it looks like and feels like, but I don't have to shovel it anymore. Yeah, Roger. Yeah, I don't drive anymore. They, uh, they retired me a couple months, so I have to worry about driving anymore during the winter. So I can just look outside and uh, smile when she snows. I have to worry about driving it. <laughs> you choose the number of elements, and that determines the band. With all five elements, 10 meters take away two of the three same size elements, six meters. Find yourself in a space-constrained area at a parks on the air, and you get underneath a pavilion, two elements, and you're easily on the underside of a roof on a picnic table. How does that get you resonant on anything? Well, that would be where the Gable Radio 7350T and TC come into play. Now, this one should look odd to you. It's got a carbon fiber body that is a prototype, but we have a 3 8 by 24 and a UHF, and they are both adjustable coils. Of course, we can always introduce something like the Mad Dog coil, your Wolf River coil, your chameleon coil. You really want to get nuts. Throw a 5 to 1 in here. And yes, I have a 5 to 1 that has the black Delrin, which chameleon antenna stopped using years ago. It looks like new because it's premium material and it lasts. So you have a great deal of adaptability with this segmented antenna. I just use the word segmented because it's in segments. Use one. Don't know where that would be applicable, but maybe you do. Use two, use three, use four, use five. Use them with all the different coils or matching units that you already have. Strength and durability are two of the things we would expect from carbon fiber. Add to this the special formulation that Gable Radio has been working on with their designers and manufacturers, and we have something that's very efficient for RF, even though we really hadn't thought about carbon fiber whips until Gable Radio came along. But in addition to durability that we will see over the long haul as we continue to deploy these and they have larger acceptance within the ham radio community, the other advantage that we get would be weight. And of course we have to have advantages because to use these premium materials there is a cost adder associated with that. So the cool factor is awesome, but we need more than the cool factor. And we need durability and longevity, and we need lightweight. And let's just see if I can get this whole thing on here completely. We come in at 3.35, so 3.3 to 3.4, 3.4 ounces for this carbon fiber whip. Well, the closest thing I could think to compare this to would be a man pack collapsible. Now, this man pack collapsible does end up being 10 inches longer than this. And this isn't, to my knowledge, this black one that I picked up on Amazon is not resonant on any frequency, I should say any band, any ham radio band. So you absolutely have to pair that with a coil or with a matching unit. At least here you get resonant and you get resonant without the need for a analyzer because you take three of these sections you know you're on six. You take all five sections, you know you're on 10, and you've got complete band coverage. But here we are at 12.4. So four times the weight of this. So we get durability, we get lightweight, 
and then we do get the ability to very quickly determine our band just by how many of these we put together in the assembly of the whip. The soft, soothing sounds of FT8, that's music to some of our ears. I use FT8 primarily for testing antennas. I am far from an FT8 expert. I've spent a little time and taught myself I really need a good education on this. I do this just enough to know that my antennas are working on modes that many of you like and prefer. The FT8 10 meter session started just as we were entering or just prior to these G4 band conditions that shut us down. So I was happy with the performance. This is what I would expect to see from an antenna that can become resonant across the entire 10 meter band, which is an advantage. Do understand because of my life schedule, I still work a full-time job, that many times my videos will transpire over a couple of days, sometimes weeks and occasionally months. This was just a couple of days apart in between the 10 meter and the 6 meter sessions. I was getting into these 6 meter FT8 sessions just as we were coming out of the worst of the G4 conditions and maybe headed to G3. I think it was 6 something in the evening Eastern Standard Time that I made my first attempt. And even on my long wire antenna, I wasn't picking up very strong FT8 signals. As a matter of fact, I couldn't make any better contacts with that than I could this tiny six meter whip. But I was able to make a couple of contacts and the band coverage here across the eastern side of the United States is looking pretty respectable given the band conditions. For kicks, the next morning, I opened it up again, had the same band conditions, I'm going to say, I don't know, early morning, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and my long wire couldn't do anything again, and this little 6 meter whip seemed to find a very tiny opening down towards South America, and I was able to make a few contacts. Another uniquely engineered, precision-crafted antenna option made with premium materials that give us durability and light weight. Six meters, 10 meters, without the use of an analyzer, and when you want to get on all the other bands, the higher bands, I would say 40 and up with a coil, we have all the coil options that I have on my antenna arsenal wall and whatever antennas that you might have your favorite coil. Go to a matching unit and again we get a broad banded antenna from something that is so small. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Glad I had the opportunity to introduce this new antenna to you. Keep your eyes open. There's a lot more coming from Gable Radio in this carbon fiber series.